Hey everyone and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Legends video. So for this video we're going to be going over everything that is scheduled to come out soon on Dragon Ball Legends starting with the upcoming banner, the way that they're going to be handling that with the characters that are on the banner, other banners that's going to be dropping as well and content like the equipment that's coming out, the other characters, just everything, right? So I hope you guys enjoy this. Hit that subscribe of course if you are new to the channel for more content as well as the notification button so you don't miss anything we upload here on the channel going forward. That being said, let me know how you guys feel about the banner, the characters, etc. You guys going to be pulling let me know so the first thing i want to mention is that this is a very weird day to be getting content and the reason that's important to mention is we thought these dudes were coming out tonight apparently they're actually not coming out tonight they're coming out on their normal regular schedule day which would be tuesday next week the start date for the banner is the 11th now i don't know exactly actually maybe it's this is why no i don't i don't know exactly why they're adding shop maintenance and summon maintenance today then right now in fact for them to not even go ahead and drop the banner now that I think about it. Because there's no other banner that appears to really be dropping right now. So let's go ahead and just do this really quick. Um, so they have num a number of banners that are actually upcoming, right? So the Happy Weekend banner is coming back. Zenkai Boo? Is that, is it, was that, that might have been for Zenkai Boo then. Because his banner is returning. It's not time for it to get reworked uh, into the uh, cheaper model. But that being said, it is coming back. So I don't... I don't really know what's happening. Gohan is not dropping tonight, which is, which is cool, I guess, but also unfortunate because I was looking forward to that. Uh, but I guess I'll wait a few more days along with you guys, and we'll see how that goes. Again, it's coming out Tuesday, so keep that in mind. So that being said, drops on the 11th, which is, again, the normal day, so it's weird they're adding the content several days in advance. Anyways, so we have, uh, unless there's some sort of issue here, which, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyways, we have Gohan, and we have Gotenks on the banner. Speaking of Gotenks, I meant to say Gotenks Absorb. The actual Gotenks is returning, so Red Gotenks is on the banner. Wow. That's impressive. Again, this is also pretty funny that they're doing all this, you know, Boo Saga stuff. But this is not Boo Saga Gohan. That is Termina Power Gohan. We'll get to that when we talk about him. Uh, so Trunks is returning, and then these guys are on the banner as well. I mean, the first, it's very top-heavy. You know, the first half of the banner is pretty good. The latter half, not so much. But not a bad banner from at least just looking at it preliminary-wise. We don't know what the Gohan and, uh, and uh, Boo Tanks do yet. But just looking at it, right? Not the worst. Uh, the EX characters, nah, kind of whatever. But there are some decent ones that are returning like always, right? Anyways, we also have the Beat the Heat one. So one consecutive summon free every day. This starts on the 9th. So this content's going to be happening all over the place. Just keep that in mind. It's not. There's not going to be a ton that happens today. Like, I think I think the Turlet story event dropped today. But this content's just kind of all out of order. It's just they put a lot in advance. I'm, I'm really expecting, like a lot of people are, for there to be something really big within the next week and a half. But again, one thing that's really interesting is that if this does wind up coming out on the 11th, as it says here... Um, that does mean that whatever LF people are looking forward to would be happening either the week after that or the week following that. So we have an interesting couple of weeks here coming up. So that being said, I don't really know. But the banner for this, this is how it's looking. So it resembles the anniversary free banner a lot. But uh, pretty much everything's here too again. Okay, that's how this is going to be. So there's really not going to be much of a way or chance to really pinpoint anything. They're all at pretty much the exact same pull rate. Pretty much all the sparkings in the game, aside from, you know, a handful or the LFs or whatever the case is. So I guess it's cool just to get the free multis regardless. So definitely not going to complain about that. So this equipment is Awakening as well. So this is one that's going to be really cool to see. Uh, definitely a good equip for hybrids. It always was, but now it's just obviously a lot better. Strike attack slot 1 up to 18. Slot 2 is blast attack and blast defense, both up to 18%. You're getting double attack and blast defense, but that's not all. Uh, you also get key recovery and special move damage. Definitely one that you're going to want to equip pretty much to every hybrid in the game. So definitely work on this. Uh, it, oh, it does specify ranged characters now. So these are the only ones that can use it. Okay, it's still obviously a nuts equip. Also, spoiler that Adult Gohan here is a ranged type character. So, again, really good equip. So, anyways, speaking of what's coming out here, Choice Battle is returning on the 16th. So, again, we normally can't see this type of stuff this far in advance. It's really weird that this is all kind of planned out here, but we, we, we can see it now. Speaking of which, um, it makes sense if the banner is dropping on the 11th. Also because that would be when co-op actually gets refreshed again. 
with Metal Cooler's boss leaving and Gohan replacing it. So it does appear that Gohan, as a hyperdimensional co-op boss, is dropping the same day as the banner, which is on Tuesday next week, uh, August 11th as, as well. So it's interesting to see how that's kind of built out again. So far in advance, we normally don't see this. This is an anomaly. So speaking of which, this drops on the 9th. The Sizzling Boot Camp event returns, or excuse me, the 11th. That returns on the 11th. So that's interesting as well. So they also do have another one of these Sweets events, just like last year. This drops on the 11th as well. They do have multi-Z power available as well. So definitely something to look forward to so just more free content and just freebies with the content excuse me um it is updated now to have boot tanks as the boss okay not bad that drops on the 11th once again um ultra space time rush is getting refreshed so that's dropping on the 11th as well so i'm guessing there's not going to be maintenance on tuesday like <laughs> everything's here already this is returning on the 11th this is returning on the 11th um so a raid is happening as well raid rush extreme clash of the world warriors this drops on the 15th Versus Super Gogeta as a boss here. Um, there were also other variants here. I think that there should be other bosses here, but it's not showing. I think it's broken on the site. But yeah, stuff's really interesting how they kind of plan this all out. I don't want to keep reiterating that, but it's it's so out of left field. They don't normally do this, right? So let me know what you guys are thinking about all this stuff. So let's jump in with the breakdowns and take a look at Boo Tanks here to begin. He has powerful opponent regen, absorption, and the rest of those tags that are just pretty generic stuff. He is also a ranged character. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down here. Uh, the main ability, plus 50% of damage inflicted for 40 counts. Also, reduces damage received by 20% for 40 counts as well. Nullifies own attribute downgrades and abnormal conditions for 25 counts. Okay. And you need 5 counts to use it. You can pop this very early in the game and get a very, very powerful offense unit that can tank decently well and will have immunities early on in the game so nice to see that he does have these extra uniques for chocolate and candy for the event that's dropping on the 11th so uh i'm ready to drive the nail into your coffin applies the falling effects itself from battle start for 75 counts oh he's a character that fizzles out after 75 counts similar to uh they have varying amounts of how long they can be at their best but similar to like green ssj goku um the gt1 similar to like uh green golden frieza so he's similar to that so for the first 75 counts of the battle you get another 50 percent damage buff that cannot be canceled thank you so much minus five to strike arts cost can't be canceled minus 10 to blast arts cost can't be canceled and he has a regeneration effect that can't be canceled thank you so much for the non-cancelable abilities the unit will be literally trash so thank you all right so hurry and drain your tears second unique here plus 40 percent damage inflicted when he enters the battlefield the effect is canceled when the enemy lands an attack. So it would reset when he enters the battlefield, but the second he gets hit with anything, tap punches or whatever, is going to get canceled. Also, restores 20% of damage received after the enemy's attack is over up to 20% of your own health. Uh, so in conjunction with that first unique with the, the card cost down, the damage buffs, the second unique that has another damage buff here that's situationally going to be available to you, um, he is going to have access to that and the very, very early access to the main ability. The only thing that he's missing is any sort of, like, card draws or whatever. He, You know, having the card cost down when paired with card draw is going to be nuts. If his green gives him that, he is going to be really powerful. Uh, so take a look at the special move here. Cancels enemies' attribute upgrades on hit up to two times with the Super Donut Kamehameha. That is incredible. Sad that it's not teachable. I, I, I get why it's not, but it would have been great if it was. Uh, it does appear he's buffing powerful opponent as well. We can see Pycon here. Green card here. Applies the following effects itself according to the number of counts elapsed from battle start. Less than 25 counts elapsed, you get key restoration by 50 and 30% damage inflicted buff. Between 25 and... So less than, you get that. But, but when you're between 25 and 75 counts elapsed, you get uh, key restoration, a 30% damage buff for 15 uh, counts. And then after 75 counts of elapsed, you get 20% damage. So he really just wants to exist, you know, prior to 75. Everything in his in his kit is saying that it's screaming, you know, I want to just destroy this opponent really quickly. Um, so the first blast art that he holds is plus 20% of blast damage inflicted. Both these cards are going to be put in your deck for the rest of the team to use as well. Uh, so it's going to be really good for regen as well. Especially with the synergy with Fusion Zamasu on regen. That's going to be awesome to see. So this one here is another one. Blast cards with 10% uh, of damage inflicted to self. So he gets a 10% damage buff for 10 counts when he uses this card. That's nuts, man. <laughs> oh, my God. So he picks up... Okay, so he's regen, blast attack, and powerful opponent, blast defense. That's how he works all the way through. Powerful opponent... Again, I said this earlier in a video. Powerful opponent seems to be completely going to be relegated to being more of a secondary thing. 
not a primary tag, like regen, buffs, or whatever. Like, it's going to be a secondary thing, it seems. But we now officially have a full core, and they have full color trio. So I might be doing a video on this. Yellow, blue, purple, that, that's a really good color trio. And you have Turles also providing those passive support buffs, which would be really good for the early power that the, the, the boot tanks is going to want to do. And then Fusion Zamasu being a unit that excels late game. That's going to be a really cool team, I think. That's going to be really cool. Sucks Turles isn't like a regen character to get also uh, extra buffs. Turles kind of is an odd man out with the rest of the tags, but whatever the case is, it should be fun. So let's take a look. We're going to skip over Gohan. I want to go ahead and take a look at Goku here. I'm really excited for Goku, and I have some fun ideas I want to do. Uh, so the armor, Hyperball Time Chamber Goku here, he is a melee type, just like his hero purple variant. Draws a blue card next, restores health by 20%, and shortens ally sub count by 5. Oh, that's... That's a lot, man. The only thing he's missing here is the restoration of key to use the blue card. But I'll take the sub count down and the health restoration. That's a good trade-off. I'll take it. So the first unique here, the following effects occur when this character enters the battlefield. Randomly destroys one of your own cards and draws a special arts next two times. <sighs> okay, so destroying your own card... Um, is good because what it'll do is it'll allow that card to slot in so you don't have to wait for it to come in by using like side steps or charge steps or just organically coming in on its own it's very similar to like when vegeto blue pops his main and he force draws the ultimate so this is good uh destroys one of your own cards and draws a green card next two times when he enters the battlefield so uh it's just assuming it doesn't destroy a dragon ball that's gonna be pretty good um plus 40 percent to strike damage inflicted for 15 counts as well uh, by the way, the destroying of Dragon Balls, I'll have to test it. I can't recall, but because this is only like the second unit in the game that pretty much does something like this, it should replace the Dragon Ball with another Dragon Ball. Most of the time, whenever you change like arts from like strikes to blast or etc., they do keep the Dragon Ball on him, but we'll see. Anyways, he also gets a 40% strike damage buff, so his green card is going to probably be really good. Oh, uh, looks like he's built for mono team, purple red. Additional 20% to damage inflicted for 15 counts if a purple or red other than this character is a battle member. A fun thing about this is I actually want to run him with the armor Gohan, the old, old armor Gohan, because it would just be a fun video. So if you guys want to see that, let me know. I can also Zenkai buff them with uh, the Trunks and Vegeta. So it, would, it could be fun, man. Um, so that being said, we move on here. The following effects occur when this character is switched out to standby. Restores allies' health each timer count for 15 counts one time. Also seals enemies' green and blue cards for five counts. Okay. Additional 20% of damage inflicted by allies for 20 counts if... A purple or red other than this character is a battle member. Okay, the only thing he's missing here again is key restoration. Key restoration would have been so much more impactful than health restoration because the health restoration activates one time. The ceiling is cool because it's it's not time restricted, like it's it's count restricted, but you can do it more than once. Uh, and the buff is for 20 counts is pretty good too. Um, so the super coming high is teachable. Reduces enemies' key by 50 on hit. Eh, whatever. Uh, so green card. Plus 20% of strike damage inflicted for 15 counts. Additional 20% of damage inflicted for 10 counts if a purple or red other than this character is a battle member. Yeah, he's doing purple red. I, they keep building these EXs like this, and that's, I guess, what they're doing. For the most part, just EXs are going to be this way. He starts off with purple strike attack and defense. Picks up red strike attack and defense at 6 star only. But 40%. That's a lot, man. That's going to be interesting to see. He's going to do a lot of damage. But again, uh, I definitely want to try him out with uh, the Gohan. The You know, I could go purple, purple, red with him and the Zenkai Gohan and this dude. I don't know. I can have some fun, man. We'll see. This dude is not particularly good anymore. I won't load him, but he's not particularly good anymore. But he could be a fun unit for a video, right? But anyways, let's go ahead and move on. And uh, we'll take a look at Demon uh, Demon King Deborah. So he's a defense type character. Um, I'm assuming he's going to be built the same way. He does not have powerful opponent. By the way, powerful opponent seems to be relegated to one of two things. Either a character that fought Goku explicitly or a character that is a main antagonist of an arc, which is why Deborah seems to not have it because uh, he doesn't fit either of those criteria. I mean, he's, he's a secondary villain, I guess, but not the main guy, right? Anyways, that being said, main ability nullifies abnormal allies. Oh, allies abnormal conditions for 30 counts. Okay, reduces enemies key by 50. Okay, destroys all of your enemies' cards as well. This is this is not a bad disruption main ability. Okay, and also the ally abnormal condition nullification is pretty good too. So the first unique plus 30% of damage inflicted when the battle starts cannot be canceled. Thank you for the non-cancelable buff. Plus 15% blast damage inflicted by allies for 20 counts every time he uses a strike or blast card. Oh, boy. If this wasn't just blast damage, this would be disgusting. Like, easily one of the best support abilities in the game, man. Um, but it is relegated to just blast. But still, alongside blast units, is going to be really good. He's red. Wait. Is he is he going to be a unit that they want to run alongside Pycon? Because this ability could make Pycon explode really, really well. Pycon's not going to be particularly great, but it would be a good one. 
By the way, another red EX defense type character. Keep that in mind, because Hit did recently come out. Uh, reduces damage received by 40% until combo ends when changing cover. Plus 20% of damage inflicted by allies when you cover? That's interesting. A support ability for cover changing. And there's no penalty of sub count. Nullifies own unfavorable element factors for five counts every time faced with an element blue character. <laughs> So he can actually come in and nullify on the cover. Yo! <laughs> Somebody made a joke that a character was going to do this. Like, uh, it wasn't going to be this dude, but somebody made a joke. Oh, they're going to nullify versus only blues. And I thought I was like, I was like, they're not going to do that. So that's always going to be good. But, like, they actually did it. Now, they, they heavily, like, balanced it, quote unquote, by making it for five counts and only five times in the match. But still, that's, <laughs> that's really good. That's really, really good. I love to see that. That's really good. All right, blue card can be taught. Evil Impulse draws a green card next on hit. Oh, this is dope. Yo, if it wasn't explode damage, or not explode, major damage, this would easily be, it might still be easily one of the best green, uh, blue cards in the game because the force draw of a green card is crazy. Yo, I am so impressed with the board right now. Restores own health with the green card. Restores allies other than this character's health as well. Oh, DeBoer is nuts. And he has a blast card that does bonus blast damage in your deck. Dabora is nuts. He's actually, I think he's actually better than Pycon. <laughs> and they have the same Z ability. He's actually better than Pycon, I think. <laughs> Yo, Dabora is really good. Yo, he's really, really good. I love this. I love this so much. Okay. High hopes for Gohan. Again, Universe Survival Saga Gohan. If you were somebody else fighting about this, no, he's not from, they paired him with Bootangs, but he's not from Dragon Ball Z. This is clearly DBS Gohan, and there's so many indicators as to why. Anyways, we now have another USS character. Could we potentially be seeing a hype one coming soon as the next potential LF? Who knows? Thank you so much for making it to this point of the video. Hit that subscribe, hit that thumbs up. Let's go ahead and review the one I am most hype about, Ultimate Gohan. Here we go. Starting out in base form, he's a range type character. Uh, so, oh, yes. Uh, no, range type, hybrid, and sun family. That's pretty much it. Okay. Main ability draws a green card, transforms, draws a green card, plus 30% of damage as well. Cannot be canceled. Thank you for the non cancelable. I'll always say that because too many units have too many things that are cancelable. Like, for example, Zenkai uh, 16 is nuts. Easily one of the best Zenkai characters in the game, by extension, making one of the best characters in the game. He's really good, but everything he does is cancelable pretty much. Like, uh, there's. They need more of the non-cancelable. With so many units that running around that can cancel everything you do, right? I love that so much. Okay. You need 15 counts to transform. You draw a green card and you get a damage buff. First unique, extreme potential. Plus 30% of damage inflicted for 20 counts when he enters the battlefield. The following effects occur when the enemy switches while he's out there. He seals the enemy's strike cards. Oh, no. The sealed cards can't be used for three counts. This is, this is shades of Zenkai Majin Buu. And he gets a free 20% damage cut for 20 counts. It doesn't stack if they switch repeatedly, though. That's still really good. Okay, he's already looking really good. The falling effect of after the enemy's attack is over. Restores 20% of damage received, up to 20% of your own health. Restores key as well. And he has a support effect? Hybrid Saiyan or Sun Family. This here is Shades of Kefla and her ability where if she gets hit with anything, he will do the same thing. If he gets hit with a Tap Punch, Tap Blast, or any Arts cards or anything at all, if he takes damage at all, he is buffing his allies. This is actually nuts. Nuts. I think 16 has that too, Zenkai 16. Anyways, this is these are easily some of the better abilities characters have nowadays. 30% to himself and any other Hybrids or Sun Family characters. God dang. And he also has... 40% damage reduction until combo ends when changing cover. He, okay, so the best thing they did for this dude is make him defensively viable pre-transformation. These transforming characters need that because they need time to ramp up. They need things like healing or damage cuts. And this dude has multiple damage cuts. He has a 40% on cover. He has um, health restoration here. He has a support effect. And he also has damage cut here when the enemy switches while he's out there. He also has the ability to seal their arts cards. So if they try to switch for type advantage, he's going to seal their strike cards. Get, and if he's coming, like, he is actually really interesting. Good. Okay. I love this, man. I'm, I'm loving this batch of characters. Inflicts enemy that should downgrade plus five to sub count for 20 counts on hit with the super common meha. Okay. Green card restores health by 20 or 10% and key by 20. He has health restoration on the green card. Goodness, bro. 
Z ability is blast attack. It's for Sun Family as well. Hybrid Saiyan or Sun Family blast attack and... Oh, he's double attack for Sun Family! Hybrids had a couple of those, I think. Maybe one. But regardless, though, they need it. But I don't think Sun Family had any actual double attack buffers. No, they did not. I can see him right now. They had some, like, pseudo double attack buffers, like this dude, the LF Namek Goku, but he's for Saiyans and, and Super Saiyans only, which wouldn't relegate, like, it wouldn't apply to this guy, for example. Okay, yeah. They pick up a double attacker. Post transformation draws a green card next. I assume it still heals. Probably has another buff in there. Plus 40%. Another 40% of damage inflicted buff. Okay. Inflicts enemy dash be not great. Minus 80% to health restoration. Okay. Okay. Plus 40% of damage inflicted for 20 counts when this character enters the battlefield. The following effects occur when the enemy switches while he's out there. Seals enemy strike cards. Uh, can't be used for three counts. There's no timer on this. Like how many times he can actually use it. He can do that repeatedly. If you switch versus him, you're going to get your cards sealed. So, like, that actually would open up the door for tackles. Like, he, he's going to be really good at tackles. Interesting. Reduces damage received by 20% for uh, 20 counts. The following effects occur after the enemy's attack is over. Restores 20% of damage received up to 20% of your health. That's still crazy. You can just passively do that. This is, like, this unique is literally almost Kefla's unique to the T, actually. Because she also heals a portion of the damage. Like, it really is. Restores own key by 20 whenever the enemy's attack is over. So again, if you're tap punching or blasting him, he's just gonna get free key back as well. Alongside the buff for 15 counts for allies. And he also still has the cover without a penalty of sub count. Allowing him to be defensively viable, man. This dude is nuts. This batch of characters is nuts. At six star, he's got 145 or so thousand defense on average. That's, that's pretty decent. It's not spectacular, but that's pretty decent. But he has sustainability with healing. He heals a lot. So now it's plus 10 to sub count. God dang. With the impulse fist, 10, plus 10 to sub count. While also having massive impact damage. He's going to hit so hard. Green card applies the following effects itself upon activation. Plus 30% of damage inflicted restores key and it combos into anything. No longer heals, but it combos into every arts card. Gives a damage buff and a key buff. This is And he draws it for free with the main ability post transformation. While also getting another damage buff here. Dude, Gohan is nuts. And he balances your deck by doing one and one instead of two blast cards, like a lot of blast type units do. I hate that blast units do that a lot. Gohan is nuts. Okay, so it's so easy to say that when looking at the characters on paper. I need to see him in actual usage, but he seems disgusting. Him and Debora are the two I'm looking at like, oh my god. <laughs> Debora is epic. So I love this batch, man. This is a really good batch of characters. Toshi, if you're listening, I know you watch the videos, man. Huge props for this batch. It's a really good batch of characters, and I hope there's more awesome units to come. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit that subscribe, and I'll see all of you in the next one.